Peter Westbrook. At 31, he's America's foremost saber fencer, a champion in a sport that's hardly known in the United States. The only fencing discipline not electronically scored, saber is judged by a jury. So controversy is as much a part of the competition as the weapon itself. Physically and mentally exacting, Peter must spend hours practicing to prepare himself for the demands of the fencing strip. Oh. It doesn't leave me any time for my personal life, so it becomes very difficult. Uh, you know, it's, it's competition is in my job because I'm a national account executive, a salesman, more or less. And then you have competition in a sport. After a while, it becomes so intense, so much competition. Never mind doing something else. I don't even have time to be with myself. So it becomes a little difficult as I get older. I want a little more good things in life, in addition to this. Yes, Charlie. Hi, it's Peter Westbrook from North American Van Lines. Oh, you have another move for me. The nature of my job here in North American Van Lines, my title is a national account executive. What I do is relocate corporate executives throughout the country, uh, from New York to California, from California to Nevada. Whenever someone gets transferred, let's say, a new hire, or when someone gets promoted. I'll get back to you this afternoon. Okay, thanks, Charlie. All righty. Bye-bye. Peter confers with a longtime supporter, his boss, Kevin Donahue. Oh, uh, Peter, just the man I want to see. Uh, yeah. Did you get to talk to the lady from the bank about that 45-mile move? Oh, yes, I did. And she said, The company's position has been that um, Peter has been given extra time off with pay, of course, uh, to attend international and national needs. That's okay. what I thought. So we're going to review it at the end of this week, and I'll get back to you. He trains on his own time, well, thank you. and okay. basically it's only two years out of four that he would have extensive travel. Uh, Peter's a fine employee. He's very enthusiastic dependable, very persistent, uh, very self-confident. I suppose the things that make him a good salesman are also the things that uh, make him a good athlete. But, uh, how I see His boss on the fencing strip is a 72-year-old Hungarian refugee, the six-time U.S. Olympic coach, Chaba Eltish. Uh, listen to me, uh, Italian, but the, what, uh, it, it depends a lot of things from the side, George. I started fencing when I was 13 years old. Then I went, you know, to the college and the University of Budapest. I got one of the greatest coach, and this was started my fencing career. In 1951, I turned to be fencing coach, and in uh, 1957, January, I left the country, you know, after the revolution, and I became coach of the World Championship in 58 in Philadelphia. He's a higher quality fencer. <laughs> I saw many teams and many competition where the weaker team on paper, you know, could beat a much stronger team because they were much better fighter, they were more unit, they fenced for each other, so that if we will do and we will be together, the gold medal is not impossible. You know? We can win. Peter, I tell you very frankly, you are ready to win. You are better. But, sir, must fight. It is the time to have heart and fighting spirit, sir. Five retreats, five advances. When not training with Chaba, Peter works out at the New York Athletic Club, a hotbed of saber fencing whose members have dominated our national team for years. I'm not. Five retreats. Fencing is an obscure sport in this country. Five it's not that well known, it's not that popular. Lunge. I'm not. Boxing Three and retreats. chess combined Three would be advances. the equivalent of fencing. Lunge. In God. fencing, you Three need feet. a very aggressive kind of person, super aggressive, and also a mind that can articulate certain moves to beat their opponent. They got an aggressive mind now and a very articulate person also. Peter's the son of an American serviceman and a native-born Japanese mother. When I was in high school, this is Catholic high school, my mother said, Peter, I'll give you five dollars if you go and try to fence. Uh, the next day I came, uh, when I saw my mother, I told her that I was quitting. She said, well, I'll give you five more dollars. I said, great, and I'll go to practice again. Uh, after that, I didn't take any more money from her because she didn't have that much to give. But I stuck with fencing because I was very good at it. Here's something that I treasure. 
The medal I have, I won in the 1979 Pan American Games, where I placed second. All the rest of these medals I won in the course of my career. I have an exact duplicate of these medals at my mother's house. She has maybe about 100 or so. I give them to her because it makes her very happy, so we split it. Ah, this is my pride and joy. This one, I won in Italy. Out of 280 competitors, I came in third. It was a four-way tie for third place. I was the only one from the Western world to make the finals. Everyone else in the finals were Russian, Hungarians, and Poles. So that's why I really treasure this. Well, today we're training this new guy. He's Something else Peter treasures, uh, his girlfriend uh, Lola Small. And With I limited time to, to spend together, together they frequently also. rendezvous downtown for lunch. I'm showing little things here and there. Peter is a very sweet and gentle person. I'm um, very good-hearted. Dedicated to his work, especially in fencing. Very businesslike in his manners when it comes to work. And even in his sport. He's also uh, a lot of fun to be with. Kareem. Lola's a great help. She's a great help to me. In fact, most of the time, let's say during a tournament or during a competition, I get a little quiet, a little to myself. At first, she got very upset, just like anyone would if you ignored someone. Today, she's a little more understanding. She tries to help me, even though it takes away a lot of time from her. She still supports me, even though it doesn't benefit her directly. I'm in Turkey, on lettuce. When Peter's engaging to go to high-level competition, you can almost sense the buildup of aggression, uh, the power that he needs in order to fence. It's like a wall around him but supporting him knowing that if he wins or lose, I will be there and still think the greatest of him. The mood changes sharply that evening when Peter takes his daily lesson. 20 minutes of torture with a molder of champions, Coach Chaba Eltish. Contra second beat, thrust. Good. Again, your foot was sooner than my thrust, sir. Peter, be careful. I don't like it. Sit down. I've been with Chaba Eltesh about 10 years. I've worked with him I don't every day, two, three hours a day. To get the rhythm, you know, of this motion. The rhythm. Uh, he has a method. When he teaches you, he, if you make any mistakes, he whacks you very hard over your legs. So he associates mistakes with pain. The top saberist and the good saberist cannot hesitate and stop and don't see anger. I don't like it. Go back. Do it again. He's from the old school of teaching. Uh, I guess he's made United States fencing what it is today. There's no question about that. In the lesson, I am his enemy. I don't tolerate anything what is careless or he doesn't concentrate. I handle him like any other of my pupils, you know, don't think I would like to be, make a good fencer. But before the lesson, after the lesson, we are the best friend. Why do you touch my blade, sir? Why you can control your blade better? I can tell you he is, in United States, one of my most talented uh, young saber fencer. He proved, you know, seven times national championship, but still not absolute perfect, you know? We'll be back with Sabre fencer Peter Westbrook right after this. with Sabre fencer Peter Westbrook as he fights for his fifth consecutive national title against good friend and New York Athletic Club teammate, Philip Riley. Into the preparation, there's a line. It's taken with a beat cut and, and repose. Beat cut. Peter is an all-around good athlete, but I think Peter's greatest strength is he has an, uh, I call it a fencing sense. It's similar to a basketball player who has hoop sense or a linebacker that has uh, that sense of getting to the hose. He's always where he's supposed to be. He always intuitively knows. And no one knows him better than longtime coach Chaba Eltish. Ready. Peter has the natural 
timing feeling. It's a very, very important thing, uh, the mental ability, you know, and the mental togetherness. He's an excellent athlete. He is living a healthy life so that uh, minimum he has two more Olympics, maybe more. But too definite. The preparation. There's a beat from the right. There's no continuation. The attack comes from the left and reposts. On the left. Stay. What I would expect to do to have a real, uh, a good day, is make the finals and compete for a bronze medal. I think a gold medal uh, is possible, but in regards to uh, the politics, the officials. I think it makes it a little more difficult. Saber is the only fencing discipline scored by four judges and a director. With the blade quicker than even the keenest eye, that makes for controversy. Now, when saber fencing becomes electrified, as in today, foil and epee fencing, it will take most of the subjectivity out of fencing. So at that point, I'll have a much better shot of winning medals or whatever, doing my best. With a final touch, Peter defeats Philip Riley to win his fifth straight national title. He's still a long shot to beat the Europeans, but Peter Westbrook remains the pride of premier Sabre coach Chaba Eltish. What is that tremendous high feeling that you get from fencing? You get this tremendous satisfaction of self-accomplishment with physical exertion plus winning. It's just like a natural high. It feels great. I'm Jim Hill, your field correspondent for the Road to Los Angeles. This is the story about two men who've taken turns leading the American 800-meter pack over the past several years, yet are dramatically different in many ways. One is coached by a former professional football.